everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. I'm your host Phoenix and today I have the wonderful Jolene with me today. Someone Hello. who totally just didn't bully me five minutes I... before we started. I have never bullied anyone. I have ever. I have evidence that that claims otherwise if my name is not Phoenix Wright. <laughs> your name isn't Phoenix Wright. I thought you were God. I can be both. You do you, man. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the wheel was spun into a book that we haven't read in a while. Is it last a while? Time, last time we read it was in February. It's been a it's been a hot minute since we got any fucking Zoro action in here, man. We're missing yeah. Our big titty green hair man with swords. I <laughs> I miss when he went into fourth <laughs> fourth sword style. <laughs> Huh? Four, four sword style? Have you seen the picture of that? Is it the one where he has it behind him? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, ass cheeks clenched. I love you so <laughs> I'm sorry, I just looked at something. I love how none of us know how to spell, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I have the thing pulled up. Our name is, uh, Magnolia. That's our YN yeah. name, but we're posing as this bitch named Rose because we're different like that, I guess. We're too cool to go by our actual name for reasons that we'll probably explore in, in this book. <laughs> Alright, let me find a coin real quick. What coin will do the honors of the coin flip? What is this one? What the fuck kind of- It says it's one cent, but what the fuck currency is this? Uh, Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Oh. How the fuck did I get this? <laughs> Alright, do you, do you want to be heads or tails? Wait, which side's heads? I'll be head. Okay, I'm assuming this side's heads. Alright, All right, it's heads. Oh, nice. Gotcha. Okay. Chapter 5. Perfect is the enemy of good. I was gonna read that perfect is the enemy of god, but... <laughs> I don't know which one hits harder. I think the god one. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I being recommended an Aura High School Host Club X reader in my- in my- you, you would also like section on here. That's some crazy shit. What have you been reading? I don't know. Hold on, what, are, what else is in here? Oh, I have- why did I get a- Wait, I don't think I can read Look, this out loud. <laughs> you build, you build your stuff brick by brick. Yeah, I do. I'm little, it's I'm a, a this one's up. a Deku extra, and I can't even read the name of it because it's so weird. <laughs> oh, I got a Natsu one. When the fuck did Fairy Tale get added to my reading list? <laughs> Lord knows. Yeah. But allow me to start. Okay, no problem. Imagine if you were forced to reset your entire life. Really. Try to imagine it. If you were to do such a thing, your whole story would be erased. Your name, your experiences, your memory. You are an empty vessel. I'm sure you would I'm sure you would wish to have a redo at some point in your life, don't we all? We aren't perfect beings after all. Shit happens. At some point, there must have been a time that you really messed up. Maybe someone messed you up. Maybe the world messed you up. The humiliation. The fear making your chest feel the weight of a thousand tons. Your heat ticks faster than sound, or sound itself. Your breath is stolen away from you as you gasp desperately to get your trembling body under control, just enough so that you can make it through the day. This pain. While well, others are forced to bear it more than others. It makes us want to disappear and fade away from existence. Fall down and down until we're away from all the world's prying eyes until it stops. But you can't. Frantic gasp for breath raced through the dense forest of Jaya. Rose's feet flew as fast as they could through the brush and vines. Once the going Mary had arrived on shore, she vanished from the pirate crew and made her escape without another word. Who was she thinking? Her being a part of a crew like that? Complete nonsense. Hell, she tried to pretend everything was fine and go along with the dream, but it was hopeless. 
Little by little, the realization slowly sank in that she had erased herself with every bottle of alcohol she consumed until she was no more. Who even was she anymore? Who was she before? How did she arrive to where she is now? So many agonizing questions clouded her mind as she braved the thorns scraping against her skin. Damn that swordsman. Was he even real to begin with? Or was he a fabrication of her dreams that were long gone? No one in all her life had offered her that much compassion before, and he almost tricked her into letting her guard down because of it. What she learned from her life experience is that you can't show vulnerability to anyone. People are selfish, and only after the personal gain and nothing more. <clears throat> Not only that, but nothing good could come from being aboard their ship, even if, we're, even if they were genuine people. She couldn't allow those people to be liabilities in her resistance against the government. She couldn't allow herself to become close to others with them after her. With the bounty as high as hers, countless people were after her. Her parents really weren't going to let her escape her sins that easily. How could she put, any How could she put anyone through that? Tears began to well in her phantom red eyes that glowed through the darkness of the glowed through the darkness of the dark forest. Her skin itched and her head throbbed as those hideous memories began flooding back. She was a hopeless shell, wandered aimlessly through the jungle, lost and alone. Finally, she stopped. Uh, she stopped to catch her breath, leaning on a nearby tree. She heaved, clutching her abdomen, fighting back the nausea, punching against her gut. Another step, and she might throw up. Sweat beaded against her forehead. Damn. Rose dug her nails into her scalp and fell against the tree. Oh shoot, my brain. I cannot read. <laughs> Damn it, I'm, damn it! She screamed. Oh, wait, what happened? I'm, I'm just realizing this seems really, really, dramatic. really well written and very dramatic. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. now realizing that I use the same song for all Wattpad book covers. So in the background, I'm just gonna be do, do, do. <laughs> just some fucking elevator music during this most <laughs> trauma. <laughs> Can you imagine how many traumatic moments we've read, and it's like just the elevator <laughs> music? Do, do, do. I'll send you the music that I use for all of them. <laughs> that way, when you like, when you have a traumatic thing that you're reading, you can put it in the background and then see that bad. Oh my god! <laughs> we'll use it when we're writing too. Yeah. <laughs> just for some fun as an inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> She screamed as the tears began to fall. She choked on her dry throat. Where the hell am I? Are you lost? A small voice suddenly spoke. Rose shot her head up, flushed from crying. Who's there? She commanded, clutching her knife. Knife. Don't cry, lady. It'll be okay. She felt a soft tug on her hand, and her eyes met a young girl gazing up at them with concern. She slowly released her grip from her blade. Are you lost too? Yeah, the girl gave a small nod. I gotta get home before darker. Mommy will get angry. The girl had the softest of brown eyes paired with her neatly cut short blonde hair. Her legs were covered in scuffed white stockings and wore a simple navy blue dress. As sweet as the image was to Rose, she found knowing well this little girl was only a spirit. She tried hard not to think about what could have happened for her to be lost in a place like this. Where's your home? Near Mouth Bay. Do you know how to get there, lady? Rose gave the best mouth she could manage. I do, she pointed. Keep walking straight east. If you walk forward that way without turning, he'll reach the bay. The girl's eyes lit up with hope. They could light, a light up the night. Yay, thank you, lady. Come play with me sometime, okay? The young girl wrapped her little arms around the woman tightly, flashing a beaming smile. Rose didn't respond and watched the girl begin to run east into the night. Oh, she stopped. Your friends are looking for you, by the way. They sure are weird. The ghost girl giggled before disappearing. Thanks again. Rose gazed into the empty space that once occupied the friendly ghost with shock. My... My friends are looking for me? Three net three teams. Let's fit up and split up and bag that bird. Right, let's go. We're gonna beat up that bird and then find Rose. We're trying to catch it. I don't know. Our trip of pirate rookies ventured into the woods in pursuit of a south bird. 
just hours of war, they successfully found the man by the name of Mont Blanc Frigate, whom Robin had mentioned earlier. Their lead proved to have uh, their lead proved to have potential, as he spoke of many tales and information to share of their Lord's guideline. The direction the straw hat must must take is south, but the crew would need a south bird to navigate the sea ahead. The surrounding islands will become far too far away for the log post to have anywhere to walk onto, so the strange bird was their best bet. The second objective was to find Rose. After she disappeared from the kitchen of the Mary, the crew found their brief encounter with her to be suspicious, especially after hearing Zoro's claim about her intentions to hurt Captain Lucy. Nothing about her felt assuring. She possessed a cold stare and a weak smile that sent chills down your spine. Her attire was all black and bleak, her hair being the only vibrance of color to her appearance. It seemed nice enough at first, but something changed. Oh my god, we're emo! <laughs> <laughs> oh <my> God! <laughs> Have any darkness to match a raven way? It, oh my! Is that not a Harry Potter fan fiction, or like my? It is a Harry Potter fan fiction. All right, next is that on Wattpad or is that like a fan fiction on that thing? Radio I think three. It's fan that. I'm pretty sure it's well, on that. When does the next April Fools lie? <laughs> <laughs> when is the next April Fool's? <laughs> yeah, God, we just, when? Yeah, we just, I'm just trying. <laughs> we, <laughs> you think it lands on April 1st? That'd be crazy. Dude, wild. Yeah. Understandably, this made the majority of the crew re reluctant to trust such a shady character. However, their captain was insistent that Rose was out there, and they had to keep looking for her no matter what. Lucy's definition of Rose was just joining them for the ride, with more of becoming a new friend and mate, especially since it was Zora who had brought the girl aboard, against the crew's hesitance. They followed their captain's orders and continued their search for the fandom. Who sent me something? Who <laughs> sent me... Who? I wonder who. Sorry. <laughs> you haven't set a year in advance. <laughs> I, I gotta have my schedule <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're triple booked at 15. Yeah, I know. I'm crazy like that. Wild. I love her. Ah, yes. They followed the captain's orders and continued the search for the, the phantom girl. Zora sauntered ahead with his hat resting against his shoulder locked in thought. He couldn't stop wondering what happened back on the ship. It caught him off guard how he ran away after his threat. He took her to be someone with tough skin, but was she really that sensitive? Did he scare her off? He didn't forget what he did to protect his captain, but it was all so sudden. He tried to rewind his memory to that night to try to find any clue on what could cause her to act in such a way. The image of her enticing eyes filled his mind as he reminisced on their first encounter. Her stare as he danced with her that night sent his heart racing. Smash. I gave up my- <laughs> <laughs> ah! Sorry, oh, wait, I the demons out. Who? Who? Rose or Zoro? Zoro, of course! Now, well, I didn't know. Now, now here, here's a good question. Pre-time skip Zoro? Or post-time skip Zoro? That is an interesting question. Yeah, it is. What kind of man are you into, Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> anyway! <laughs> wait, Rob- wait. Robin, who is accompanying Zoro, stopped in her tracks, snapping Zoro out of, out of his trance. That sounded like someone screaming, she said, concerned, hearing three cries of fear in the distance. Really? Zoro sarcastically replied, knowing exactly who those screams belonged to. Curly brow, long nose, and the navigator. Completely unfazed, the swordsman heard something falling from a tree above and quickly swung his sword. On the ground was the carcass of a giant centipede cut in two. You don't have to kill every living thing we need. It's kind of rude. Robin criticized. That's so real. It's so real of her. I love her. <laughs> yeah, well, we shouldn't have. Well, you shouldn't have snuck up on me, Zoro replied dryly before continuing the search. Hey, wait. 
Laura was growing annoyed with how much this woman was stopping him. Now what? We're going back the way we came. <laughs> Laura froze in his face and grew cold in embarrassment. Damn it. Before he could say an insult to the dark lady, Robin continued with her question. By the way, how did you and Rose meet? <sighs> what does that have to what does that have to do with anything? He grumbled. It's not like you to be so trusting to let anyone aboard the going Mary, she argued. She sure is a mysterious person. I was curious to know if you two have met before. No, just met her at the bar last night, he rolled his eyes. She was wasted and alone with nowhere to stay. Stupid woman. Robin chuckled. Well, wasn't that sweet of you, she grinned. She grinned. Smile growing bigger upon seeing Zoro's face begin to change color. Shut up. About oh, two hours later. The straw had sat in a circle, covered in bruises and scrapes from their various encounters with the giant bugs that inhabited the forest. They huffed out. They huffed out of breath from running around it for hours as they regrouped themselves. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. We didn't see we didn't even see one. That's what remarked. Well we did, but we can never get close enough to grab it thanks to all those stupid bugs. Lily said annoyed, sitting on a nearby log. We couldn't even find Rose anywhere. This place sucks. So, seven people couldn't catch one bird? That's pathetic. Come on. Would you guys get it together? Usopp stood prominently with his arms crossed. <laughs> oh my god, Usopp. <laughs> yeah, you're one to talk. Sanji rolled his eyes at the sharpshooter. It was too busy cowering in fear the whole time. I'm more worried about Rose. It's too dangerous for a woman to be alone at night in a scary place like this. Smash. I mean, yeah, you're right, Sanji. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can handle stuff just fine, I'm sure. Zoro looked at the ground. I'm pretty sure we can cut her loss and then say she's gone. The cook's eyes lit up in angry flames towards the swordsman. You bonehead, you're useless! You're the one that scared her away in the first place. No wonder she ran away. Shut your mouth, Zoro gazed, refusing to consider the end. Refusing to consider the notion. She ran away of her own accord. How do I read that? Quack! <laughs> Good enough for me. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> a peculiar bird rested, above, rested itself on a branch above. He laughed at the pathetic pirate below, doing his strange sound in amusement. He just said, You morons think you catch us? Ha, ah, good one. Chopper translating for, for the bird. Moron, what nerve. How about I give you one right between the eyes? As a sniper drew back his slingshot, several arms suddenly appeared around the bird and grabbed a hold of it tightly in their, in their clutches. The south bird fell from its perch and smacked hard onto the ground. Huh? I could grab it if I could see it, Robin casually said. Well, guess that's it then. Wait! All heads turned towards the rustling in the bushes. Eyes widened at the sight of a sudden burst of scarlet emerging emerging from the dark. Rose! Lizzie jumped with joy upon seeing the girl appear. He laughed with a warm smile, running towards the woman, panting panting from running as fast as she could. Where have you been? Why did we split up in the first place? That was so easy, Nami mumbled, rolling her eyes. Smash. <laughs> <laughs> I love Nami. I wanted to be like you for, for like a split second, my bad. I didn't mean to steal your thing. Yeah, <laughs> you stole my line! I'm supposed oh, to say apologies. smash! Okay, wait, let me reread it. Here Why did we split up in the first place? That was so easy. Now we mumbled, rolling her eyes. Smash. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I got you, fam. I, I'm sorry, Rose Huff, leaning down her, to her knees to catch her breath. Hmm? Sorry for what? Luffy cocked his head. <laughs> Can you read? <laughs> Rosie uh, I have a threat. <laughs> do you want me to read that whole line? <laughs> yeah, do the whole thing. Okay, do the whole thing. I'll, 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 I'll redo it. I'll redo it. <laughs> Rosie Swan, I was so worried about you. Were you hurt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm challenging my, my inner Sashi <laughs> for that one. <laughs> The left to cook squiggle towards the squiggle. Yeah, that is such a good one. Wiggle, wiggle. You know, squiggle towards Rose. 
Not before being smacked upside the head by the hilt of a sword. <laughs> Donji to the ground with a lump on his head. Stupid cuff. Right, <laughs> Zora snarled. He then turned to face the young woman with a face void of any emotion. Why are you here? Why'd you run? He asked coldly. Rose stood slowly, legs aching from all the running. Her chest burned as she continued to gasp for air. I'm, I'm sorry I ran, she said, too scared to face the poison yet. Just the sound of his tone filled her with guilt, but I can't join your crew. Huh? Why not? Luffy casually asked. Bleak hazel eyes turned to the young captain with hesitance. He still had that sick sickeningly innocent look on his face. It was completely different from the face he bore that day at the pub when he faced against Bellamy. He was an enigma, to say the least, but there was something about him that interested her. From the first time she came across this strange boy, her heart beat to a different tune every time she saw him. Suddenly, she tried to catch a glance at the man that rescued her that night in Mocktown. She stood there. Ah, he stood there with a disappointed look, arms crossed awaiting her explanation. Completely opposite from that compassionate glow he bore with the fat under the stars. Why were they looking for her? She was nothing but garbage floating in the wind. You know that Katy Perry song? Huh? You know that Katy Perry song? Do you ever Oh, like a plastic stuff? bag! <laughs> Oh. I was like, what the yeah, fuck are you talking about? Because, <laughs> baby, you're a firework. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how the plot's gonna go, but if, if it gets if it gets a bit dark, she might end up with one. You oh. know what I mean? Whoa. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> I'm no one that's gonna be of any benefit to your crew, she flatly said. I promise, I'll bring nothing but trouble. Before she continued, she took a deep breath and clenched her fist. Thank you for giving me a place to stay, and I'm sorry for how rude I was. The fist started to tremble, making Zora raise an eyebrow. I... I'm a mess. She gritted her teeth, trying to keep herself from shedding any tears. I'm not well. I don't consider myself to be a sane person. Day and night, I am forced to endure the voices of the dead. They follow me everywhere. With this power I possess, I'll forever be a gateway to the world of the spirit. I can't sleep. I can't think straight. Her, voice, her throat began to become choked up, but forced herself to finish her lament. I've become an addict. I can't function without any alcohol to keep it to keep it all away from me. Finally coming to terms with how she washed, uh, how she washed up. How washed up she truly has become. Her eyes began to shower tears from her face. To top it off, I'm a wanted woman with a very high bounty. The Navy has been on my tail for two years with no intention of stopping. If I go with you, they'll be after you too. So? Rose looked up in disbelief at the boy in the straw hat looking down at her with a puzzled expression. What do you mean, so? Did you hear anything I just said? She looked around at the other members for validation, but they were all standing around her with smiles. Some even trying to keep in giggles. What? Why are you all looking at me like that? You really think we're all sane here on this circus of a crew? Zora spoke up, catching Rose's attention. Come on, put your crying already. I'm not going to meet anyone crazier than our captain, and the Navy's been chasing us for months thanks to the moron. Luffy chuckled, scratching the back of his neck. Yeah, Zora's pretty nuts too. I'm not. You're one to talk. Zora barked towards his captain. I am too. I'm not. <laughs> they really don't care, do they? Rose stared confused, watching the two friends go back and forth. Then she felt a gen uh, familiar gentle tug at her pants. Hey Rose, let's get you fixed up. You don't look so good. A fluffy reindeer shines at the camera. Ah! It's our baby! I love him! Yeah. The little baby! He's such a baby! Such a baby! She was speechless. Did no one really hear a single word she said? The orange-haired navigator then approached her with a similar grin and hand on her head. You should have said so back on the ship, Rose, if that's how you felt, she remarked, then placed her hands on Rose's trembling shoulders. We all have our own stories, and no one's perfect. Do you really have nowhere to go? Uh, no, I don't, Rose answered with face frozen in awe. Then come on, Usopp smiled. We're gonna get back to Cricket's house and show him the bird we caught. 
The bird? Where is that? <laughs> Did that pick up at all? Yeah. Perfect. I'm so good. I'm so good at bird. The bird is a word. Bird, 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 bird. <laughs> <laughs> Rose glanced over to the strange bird lying defeated on the ground. Um, is this why you guys were out here in these woods? Yeah, and to look for you, Luffy chuckled. And Nami's right. We should have said something. No need to get all worked up about it. A gentle hand rested itself against the ghost woman's shoulder. And Rose looked up and, and met the, com uh, the comforting sight of those compassionate eyes that sent her heart racing. You're really a handful, aren't you? He cracked a small smile. So, this is who she actually was. Not some heartless woman with a smart mouth. Rose hit a subtle blush from the swordsman. Shut up. Okay, maybe she didn't have a smart mouth. But under that thick shell and phantom power, she could see that she was still human. Maybe she couldn't see it yet. But maybe if someone helped her open her eyes. Come on, ghost lady. Let's go. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Whoa. What? <laughs> Oh, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I got it. I'm right behind you. <laughs> of course, it's my turn to read. The dogs won't shut the fuck up downstairs. All right, cool. Chapter six. A smile is a sword. No, I'm pretty sure the sword is a smile. It ain't the smile, smile fruit. <laughs> and now I can't stop smiling. Hope someone got that reference. <laughs> I wish I did. Yeah. Oh, you wait, you want to hear about it or no? We can wait a little bit. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> what a delightful story. A fantastic tale of the poor man who was forced to raise a sword to protect his family from the village invaders. Homes were engulfed in flames and people frantically running through the streets. He was a cowardly man, scared of his own shadow, and looked down upon by his village. He did not believe in violence and was sent to confrontation. That is until he set his eyes on a beautiful maiden washing her laundry by the river. Her hair shimmered by the morning light and she had an angelic smile that could bring a man to their knees. Every morning he would visit the river to see her, bringing her flowers just to see that beautiful smile. Seeing her face light up with happiness made him feel like he could do anything. Now he stands frozen in the shadow of a towering barbarian who raises an axe by the neck of the damsel in distress. She screams in terror, and against all of his beliefs, he raises a blade. Magnolia! Robert has arrived! Get yourself ready! Damn it, mother. I was just getting to the good part. I slammed the book shut in a, in a, with a huff and gazed out the grand window. Robert's carriage was indeed here, his slaves acting as placements for wheels with their knees wobbling in, in agony from the weight. How annoying. Upon- oh, I- powder? People do that. I thought, <laughs> what's what does it do to? Do. Yeah, what does it mean? What do you powder your face for? Um, you could powder your face like, like powder foundation. Oh, okay, I, I get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I powder Another example. I powder my face once more before descending the the staircase. I remembered to keep my posture, uh, poised. 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 <clears throat> My hands delicately gracing the banster with the skirt of my gown gliding behind me. Ah, ah, there's my beautiful flower. He grins at me with an extended hand. <laughs> Don't laugh at the voice. No, I'm not laughing at the voice. I just saw something out the window. <laughs> yeah, right. He takes my he, extending in hand. He takes mine and kisses me. Are you ready for an outing? I have a fresh bottle of champagne in the carriage. I nodded my head with a fake smile. Honestly, I'd rather run hastily back upstairs and finish reading my book. It'd be more interesting than a day with this imbecile. Mother wishes us a pleasant time, however, and we make our way outside. It's another beautiful sunny day, and it, as it's always a beautiful day here in the Mary Go. Go. -y -go the Mary place. Zua. Yeah, Mary Zua. In <laughs> the place. Slice so boost. So these bitches themselves become our staircase inside the carriage. Pathetic. I can get up on my own, but for, but God forbid I show any vig the vigor. vigor around my bethrone. He'll be appalled. Betrothed. Be bethrone? Betrothed. 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 
He will be appalled. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to care. Hesitantly, I stepped on the backs of the slaves in, into the carriage. They flinched as my heels pressed into their skin. Robert follows me into the carriage, adorned with luxurious cushions and treats. I couldn't help but wince at the sound of the cracking whip that assaults the slaves outside, forcing them to lift the carriage and carry us to God knows where. In a little, little scrolly scroll. So, Magnolia, dear. How have the preparations been for our wedding? He grabs a hold of a crystal glass, pouring himself a drink. The bottle reaches, reaches for my glass, but I interrupt. Sorry, I'm not old enough to drink. Come on, we are royals. We can do whatever we want. He laughs. His laugh booms through the carriage. He proceeds to pour me a glass full, completely ignoring my plea. Drink up, my bride. Our future is worth celebrating. You sure are amazing. Amusing. That too, I guess. His dark blue eyes staring at me, piercing through my skin. It makes my heart accelerate in fear. Something tells me I sh if I object to it, it, it would not be in my favor. My hand trembles slightly as I take a sip of the dry, bittersweet drink. I did not like it in the slightest. It took everything I had not to spit it out. It had been exactly seven days until we were wed. My mother and father wasted no time making preparations, forced me to do nothing but remain locked up in my room, left... Loving, nothing? Wait. But remain locked up in my room, left to dread the, dread the fateful day. The more I thought about it, the more I found the taste of this awful champagne becoming more tolerable. How odd. I began to find myself taking more and more sips of the champagne to help endure Robert's meaningless, boastful banter. My eyes gazing out into the open rolling meadows, enjoying the flowers dance in the wind. I wonder, was I being too dramatic? Is this weather going to be awful? The last few weeks I spent with Robert have been so very boring. He can speak about nothing but himself. I heard the same stories over and over, and my head is aching every time I had to suffer through them. And he has nothing short of a coward. Sure, I haven't been exposed to much outside, anything outside my estate. But even I can un with withstand a butterfly or bee in my presence. Perhaps he could be like that man from my book. If he truly does love me, would he raise a blade for me if an axe is held to my throat? The carriage holds. We here! Robert grins as he takes a hold of the of his whip in one hand, his champagne in the other. I look out the window. It's Robert's estate. I thought you mentioned we'll be having dinner tonight, I mindlessly ask. You are becoming my bride. This will be your home soon enough. I thought we would should dine here tonight, let you get comfortable in your new home. His words did not match his expression, making him feel uneasy. Making me feel uneasy. He may sound welcoming, but his eyes remain cold as ice. Before I can react, he clenches a hold of my hand, tightly hurting my fingers, and practically drags me out of the carriage. What happened to a gentleman who escorted me not moments ago? Hurry up, Magnolia. We have much to do. Rose? Hey, Rose, hurry up. Huh? She bats her eyes, becoming... bringing back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Come on, <laughs> we only have a couple hours left until we set sail. I know you're new around here, but we need to finish preparing the Mary as soon as possible. Now we called out from the, the deck of the ship. Right, sorry about that. Rose lifted her pale hands and immediately went back to work. Using her powers, she helped levitate heavy wood planks ashore, ashore onto the ship where Usopp and the others were working tirelessly with hammers and nails, repairing, repairing the, the broken ship. While the straw hats were deep in the woods in search of the south bird, the Bellamy pirates had come ashore to steal Cricket's gold, destroying his home and the going merry in the process. While Rose wasn't familiar with the situation at hand, one thing was for certain, Bellamy had crossed the line. Cracking his knuckles, Luffy declared that he had the situation under control and began to make his way back to Mocktown on the hunt to retrieve the stolen gold. Rose shouted at Luffy that he was insane for thinking that he could take on Bellamy after what happened in the pub yesterday, but her words were ignored. Before she could run after him with her dagger in hand, a larger blade held her back in her tracks. If you're going to try and stop him, you're going to need something more like this. He glares, his sword drawn in front of her, making sure Rose didn't take another step. She attempted to push his arm away, but the swordsman was stronger than she thought. 
He's gonna get himself killed. That bastard was the one who kicked me out of my hotel. I don't want to stand for this bullshit anymore. <laughs> All the more reason to like for you to leave the situation to our captain. His expression hardened towards the woman, making her blood run cold. If you're serious about coming with us, you need to trust in Luffy. I promise that he'll take he can take care of himself. No problem. Now quit whining. I mean that that is a true statement. They <laughs> Luffy will do it. Don't worry about him. He's fine. Just <laughs> He survived death. Yeah, exactly. See? He survived death so many times. He's fine. <laughs> walk it off. <laughs> the epitome of walk it off. Yeah. Walk it out. <laughs> now she's here with the rest of the crew, continuing to repair the Marriott for departure. What has been what has been this day? Nothing but chaos for certain. She couldn't help spacing out now and then as her sobering mind continued to flood back with memories long repressed. Her mind continued to pulse with pain from all of it, but for now, all she wanted was to leave this place once and for all. Maybe it would be best to set the mental breakdown aside for a while. No, me too, honestly. I'm like, I don't have it penciled in right now. I gotta... Can we reschedule yeah, for, for totally Sunday? <laughs> can we reschedule the breakdown, please? <laughs> I... <laughs> to just focus on the task at hand. Maybe these straw hats were the fresh stars she's been wanting. Zoro, the swordsman, also had many thoughts plaguing his mind. He watched Rose from the corner of his eyes. He continued hammering nails into the mast. He, he couldn't stop asking himself why on earth he let her aboard the ship in the first place. Well, it's because you like her. Ooh. <laughs> Robin was right when it was... It wasn't like him to trust someone so easily, let alone around his friends. She proved to be a danger to the crew just hours before, and now she was cooperating with them. What changed? He tried to chalk these series of events to be because of his intoxication that night, but his blurred reoccurrence memory of her enticed eyes and seductive movements argued him otherwise. Whack! <laughs> oh shit! Zora cursed out loud. He had stopped paying attention and slammed the hammer into his own fingers. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Why didn't you go with Luffy? Nami suddenly sh shouts at Zoro. He growled, anger rising fast. What? What's with you? Fight, don't fight, go, don't go, do this, no, do that, make up your mind already. He rushed his ruthless snap towards the navigator. The sudden outburst caught the attention of the phantom lady below, curious of what the argument was about, and began secretly eavesdropping. Tommy scoffed. You're scared! Those guys beat you the first time around! Zoro frowned at Nami's sour comment. Is that what you think? You don't get it. They didn't beat us. Refusing to fight doesn't mean that we were afraid. When there's no reason to fight, the only way to win is to stand down. Nami bore an annoyed expression. Oh, I see. She rolled her eyes. Stand down. Real brave. <laughs> you don't know anything about fighting! Zoro balled up his his hand into a fist and punched the mass, not not being able to control his anger as much longer. Just shut up. Don't tell me to shut up. Like it matters. You don't listen to me anyway. Punches begin erupting on the on the ship as the argument becomes too heated to understand any longer. The comedical sweat drop appears on Rose's face as she watches fist fly. Wonder if those are I wonder if those two are a couple or something to be arguing like that. Though I worry it's not a stable relationship by the looks of it, she wonders, and not expect a pit of her stomach forming. Huh. Must be hungry or something. She rushes out the feeling to that and nothing more. She then glanced to her arm, where she suffered her wound from shielding Luffy from the window in the bar. Chopper had properly snitched it up not long ago, allowing the wound to heal better than the patch job she made before. So, that- wait, fuck. <laughs> so, that's what this is all about? M morality? She asked herself under her breath, but formed a hidden smile. What a bunch of fools. This crew really is a circus like that swordsman claims. She chuckled softly, finally lifting the last piece of wood onto the ship. Huh, that's it! She's done! Usopp beamed in excitement. The crew <laughs> cheered- <laughs> Sorry, I love Usopp. Usopp gets mentioned vaguely, vaguely, and my brain just goes, 
Bro, yeah, we have, there he is. Bro, we have a whole book to read about Usopp, and you're and you're like, yes, finally. <laughs> I'm just making fun of you, that's all. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, we, oh, we gotta get the, yeah, Heisen's favorite character, Usopp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Usopp. He's a Usopp lover. Yeah. I'm, we were in box lunch, and I'm like, look, it's your favorite! And I pointed at Usopp, and he wanted to shoot me. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. What? What's interesting about that? Nothing. Just curious. The no. curious interaction. Curious friendship you'll have. I don't know how to explain anyway. it. <laughs> the crew cheered up, cheered, applying their hard work. The going merry now fitted with the necessary parts to take on the knock up stream. Cricket had lit a fire for the, the, the crewmates to rest and take a load off after working so hard throughout the night. His home had yet to be repaired, so the bunch had to camp outside until their captain returned. Everyone had passed out pretty quickly, with their snores echoing in harmony with the cicadas chirping from the woods nearby. <laughs> Fuck! Cicadas. <laughs> Rose laid there, basking in the um, obnoxious noise, with her tired eyes half closed. Spirits echoed in the distance as she tried her hardest to focus on the crew's snores, but it was losing the battle. Everything alright? A familiar voice hummed from behind her. Rose slowly turned over from her spot in the grass and did her best to keep her heavy eyes open. Hey, my head. <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's Zoro. He grim grimace. <gasps> grimace? Like the grimace shake from McDonald's? You can get <laughs> Oh, right. She yawned. She sighed with a big yawn. What are you doing up? Keep him watch in case Luffy comes back. Or anyone else, for that matter. He stays, taking a seat next to the lady with crimson hair. Uh, it softly glowed in the faint light of the campfire. Could we, could we start over? Oh yeah, yes please. I mean, what? Huh? huh what? <laughs> Sorry, I'm simping. <laughs> Rose, <laughs> Rose was suddenly taken aback by a sudden change of tone. Start over? What do you mean? Well, we clearly gotten off with the wrong foot yesterday. He gazed, his gaze locked onto the ground, searching for the proper words. Don't be silly. You didn't do anything wrong. Rose shook her head. Like I said, I'm not exactly in my right mind. I don't think I've, I've been for a long time. Yeah, you did act pretty crazy. Dora bluntly stated. <laughs> crazy. I was crazy once. They put me in a room. <laughs> No! Please! <laughs> You're like, the voices are winning! <laughs> Rose couldn't help but laugh at his merciless response. A man that has no problem speaking his mind. I see. Zora couldn't help but smile at the woman's sweet laugh. He found himself happy to hear it again. I don't like wasting time beating around the bush, so what's up with you? Rose sat up and leaned against her arms, looking up at the sky. I wasn't lying at the facts at the fact that I'm an addict. This is the longest I've been without alcohol in I don't know how long. I felt so sick and confused. I don't remember how or when I got to this island. You really don't remember a thing from the night we met, do you? No, not really. She bit her lip, half lying. She remembered a brief image of his deep his deep brown eyes staring at her underneath what a do sea you of stuff. <laughs> like that. What? You changed tone. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just reading. Oh my god. <laughs> His deep brown eyes staring at her underneath the sea of stars, just like tonight. But that was about it. She wasn't sure what truly happened, or thought about, or or thought it was better to keep her mouth shut. Zora groaned, laying down in the grass, resting his eyes. Don't worry, nothing bad happened between us. I assure. You were in a pretty sorry state, so I brought you out for f fresh air. He threw up and said some shit to me, and it showed me your freaky devil fruit power. Ah, oh, well, shit. <laughs> Rose cringed and buried her face in her hands. Why on earth did you let me aboard your ship? You, got, you gotta be crazier than me to let someone aboard that. Trust me, I've been asking myself the same question nonstop, Sora accidentally admitted. Now he also began to cringe slightly, 
as it was not the direction he wanted this conversation to go. Rose's Rose's full list began to frown as she got lost in watching the flickering fire. I don't remember what kind of person I used to be. It's been so long. She drifted off. This devil fruit. It's a curse. A lot of people are out there looking for me to get their hands on it. But I wouldn't wish this power upon anyone. Alcohol is the only thing that helps numb my mind enough to keep the spirit's cries away. I can't sleep at night if I'm sober. The voices of the dead just continue to echo in my head nonstop. Yeah, let me experience that firsthand. I can't imagine. Zoro sympathized with a concerned expression. He watched Rose sit in silence by the fire, but she never gave a response. He sighed and decided to speak to her, realizing it was pretty much his fault for bringing her to this topic. He dug deep and spoke with pure honesty. I brought you aboard because you needed somewhere safe to go. Rose turned her head to face the handsome swordsman with curious eyes, still reluctant to talk. Ooh. Yeah, that's the handsome. Stop! <laughs> that's my life! <laughs> I've been in your shoes before. I mentioned before I, had a I was a bounty hunter before I joined this crew. I hunted people for money, yes. But soon I found myself starting to enjoy the hunt a little too much. I started my journey with the sole purpose of chasing my dream. To become the world's greatest swordsman. As time went on, it became nothing but a cycle of chopping off heads to buy more booze to prepare myself for the next kill. I lost sight of myself for a while. That is until Luffy came along. And then he asked you to be part of his crew. The young lady finished the thought with glossed eyes. Yeah, that dumbass is shameless, he snickered. But he has the heart of gold with dreams crazier than mine. I believe 100% that that guy's gonna be the king of the pirates someday. And then we're like, wealth, fame, power, gold rotter. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really are serious about going to that skyline after all. Rose said out loud and all. Dead serious, he grinned, making her dark heart jump without warning. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I admit, I saw a piece of my past self in you, and I couldn't bear to see someone like you suffer like that. This is a good crew, and I promise you, you'll be safe here with us. Rose shivered at his warm touch, his stare giving her nervous chills. W what do you mean, someone like me? Uh, um, his cheeks suddenly grew. His cheeks suddenly grew red as he lost his composure for a second. I just meant that I don't think you're a bad person, is all. You'll be the first person to say so. Rose tenderly smiled. Oh, you should get your hands off my shoulder before Nami sees. Why do you care about that? Oh, why would I care about that? Zoro gave a puzzled look. Aren't you two together? Rose tilted her head. Zoro's face suddenly grew red as the sun, as it began rising over this- that had just began rising over this ocean. Ew, no way! He said, gagging, making Rose laugh at his comedic reaction. Not in a million years. Ha! Huh. Rose continued laughing. You're really cute when you're angry. Zoro's anger became an ab came to an abrupt stop. Catching him off guard by the woman's words, he huffed and looked away with cheeks still red. Sh shut up! Baka! <laughs> no, not Baka! <laughs> What's that old trend? It's like, you gotta smell like a Baka! <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Right, how are we feeling? I need to laugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Are you feeling like a Baka? <laughs> No. <laughs> no? That's I do not feel like a baka. I feel like a baka. Anyway, I like this. I, I, I miss yeah, reading I, I from feel this like author. This story. I, I love this author so much. I need this person's autograph. I, I need... If we, if we could get some of these people's autographs, that'd be so cool. Yeah. Imagine being recognized out and you're like, oh my god. Hey, you, you were my like, favorite fanfic. Yeah, they're like, oh shit. <laughs> like, how the oh my god. You're like, how you're talking about how I got your address. Don't worry about that. 
And that, that's, that'd be crazy. You know be crazy if, like, I'm walking down the street and they're like, Oh my god! I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know YouTube, right? And they're like, you wrote that, that self-insert Voxix reader! And that's all they know me from! <laughs> and I'm like, that would be, that'd be so fucking That'd be funny. hilarious. That would be funny as shit. How would they know it's you, though? <laughs> don't, don't worry, don't worry about how I got your address. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about how I know that you're in this exact city at this coordinates. Don't worry about it. I'm totally not stalking your Instagram or anything like that. Dude. Can anyone, can no. I get your autograph? <laughs> 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 Alright, Joel, you know what it's time for? Ooh, for real! Do you think it's gonna be Usopp? Oh my god. You know what? We'll see. We'll let fate decide. Alright, let's see. Use the, the crumpling sound if you heard it. What? You know? Oh, don't worry about my crumpling sound either. It's crazy. <coughs> I just assaulted everyone's ears with my cookie wrapper. <laughs> just put that shit right next to the mic and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yeah, we had like Usopp back to back to back. What, what? I don't know what's gonna be next, man. Well, it's the only way one to find it! Don't tell me what to do! I'm winning. <laughs> I'm really winning out here. You're winning. You are him. Yeah! I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> good, for, good for you, man. I'm, gl I'm glad you're doing, you're doing great right now. I was really hoping it was my choice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was gonna pick Soul to a gang leader, but I guess we can re <laughs> Yeah. My love. Alright, I guess we're reading about Dolphamingo's brother. So this should be interesting. I love him. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Next time on Battlestar Galactica. What the fuck is Battlestar Galactica? Don't worry about it. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching. It. Wow, you're trying to wrap this up faster than I do. You're like, alright, done, cut the cameras, but it's over. <laughs> you just, you just want to get to that fucking writing thing in, in like in a no. minute. No, what? Damn, you're no. like, I need to write this this Phoenix X Vox thing I w I've been sitting on about this coffee shop AU and this hurt comfort. Look, the, fir <laughs> the first. The sooner I can finish this, the sooner I can get the lore and move on to the next project. Okay, 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 you're right, you're right. Is it this much chapter we're thank talking about? Thank you for watching, <laughs> Okay. Uh, what? No! Yeah, anyway, anyway, thank you guys for watching! I, I, uh, I highly appreciate it. Uh, anyway, don't worry, don't worry about that. <laughs> thank you, Jolene, for oh. joining. I, I appreciate you, you're great, That's you're no awesome. Problem. You no, never miss fun. any of our scheduled recordings. <laughs> I love you. No. <laughs> Did you say no? I not. I said no. I mean, like, I've never missed one. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, do you have any final words? Do you have any, do you, do you have any wisdom you want to drop on, on these bitches? Wisdom? Yeah. Um, take care of yourself. This life is short. Enjoy it. Yeah. Or else Jolene will people. come to your come to your house and beat you up. <laughs> I like how it sounded like you said, come to your cell at first, like I have them all in jail. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually just like the simping channel, where it's like the horny jail. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't want to be warden, it's not fun. Good, it's not fun for an elf either. <laughs> I keep escaping, <laughs> I keep smuggling shit in. I'll smuggle you stuff in. Thanks, homie, you a real one for that one. Alright, on screen somewhere is a playlist of all the other Wattpad book club readings that I've done, including on screen also, like, the one from, like, that last- or, I don't know. The words are hard right now. Anyway, I'm- I'm falling apart. Description has links. Look at the links. They're literally cool links. Anyway. Woo -wee! Yeah! Look at the links! <laughs> People your social security! Follow my Wattpad book club thing! <laughs> Alright, my name is- my Join name's... the Discord! Join the Discord and my Twitter page and I'm totally updating! <laughs> and also, uh, I don't know, TikTok? I don't know! <laughs> Alright, well anyway, my name is Phoenix, that was Jolene, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye. <laughs>